All right, we're back for uh, Act Three of mm-hmm. the thrilling uh, Laura Bow game of wandering around a house till shit happens. Till old women die. Ah. <laughs> So, yeah, let's continue the adventure and see who is uh, presumably next. (sighs) Every clock has that chime. That... Well, there's not even a clock in this room. (laughs) Still, though. I always associate this with school. I'm not really sure why. Yeah. Uh, Wilbur, did you happen to see that shadowy figure pass by? Am I the only one seeing this? Yeah. Am I just nuts? Maybe I'm nuts. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying here. <laughs> oh, sh- sh- where is he? Where is he going to check? I don't even know. I guess. Well, she's back. Uh, oh, okay. He clearly didn't find anything either. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But, well, I tried. I uh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. Oh, I I forgot something in there. Oh no! Uh, oh shit! What's that on the floor? Pink feathers. From a feather boa. Now, who do we know? Oh. The plot thickens. I was wondering, my first thought was who had a pink bird? <laughs> well, there is a bird in the game. There's a parrot in the bar. Yeah. But mm. that's actually something I miss doing in the game. I guess you can feed, uh, you know, the crackers in Jeeves' room? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can feed those to the bird for information. But Oh, my God. That's great. Yeah. Maybe I'll go back and check that out later. So now we're doing some investigating. So, what window did Wilbur get thrown out of? Right? So I guess the racehorse they bought is named Sunny Boy! Okay. And of course, as we heard in the last act, Sunny Boy broke his leg and presumably ruined the bet that uh, Wilbur and Clarence kind of put on it. Rudy. Rudy? Rudy? Rudy. Rudy and Clarence? Yeah. Okay. No, wait, sorry, it was Wilbur and Clarence. I can't <laughs> remember who does shit in this game. It's... Yeah, I wonder if if maybe they sort of staggered everyone's appearance a bit so that you kind of, you got to meet so-and-so and so-and-so before, you know, meeting everyone at once instead of meeting everyone at once, just so that you can have more time with the characters one-on-one and kind of better distinguish who is who. Yeah, that would probably work a little better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we are basically just thrown into... I mean, we had the entire cast presented to us at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And nobody really has that much of a distinct personality beyond asshole. Yeah. So. Yeah, they're, they're not so much defined by their personalities as it is just their the backstory that we're finding out about them. Yeah. Um, we don't really know about Clarence as a person. We just know that he has had a racehorse bet that went wrong. Oh, what's that? Oh, interesting. It's a cane. So someone was in here. We're gonna pick it up. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> if you leave stuff lying around the house, it's Loris. <laughs> <laughs> the finders keepers. I, I really love the okay text that comes up. I know, I right? I just get a kick out of it. <laughs> Take so, this, yeah, alright. Alright. Oh, uh, what? Oh, shit. And you Ta-da. thought he was wheelchair bound. I'm, well, I mean, technically, he, he could still need a wheelchair. <laughs> he just means that he's not completely uh, handicapped. No, this is a revelation. I do appreciate how we had to kind of break the uh, the mold of our typical um, peeping scene. Yeah, so that we could very clearly establish he's walking. Otherwise, his head would just be moving around. Yeah, I guess you would sort of see the torso get up, but yeah, I wanted to read as clear. Yeah. Hmm. So dun dun dun. I guess that's to sort of uh, suggest that perhaps. Um, you know, we might have assumed that the the colonel 
uh, wasn't capable of any uh, murder. wrongdoing, yeah, because he was not able to navigate the house as easily. But obviously, if he's he... been put in the suspect chair, mm-hmm. the... <laughs> the taken out of the wheelchair and put in the suspect <laughs> chair. So uh, this is where Fifi lives. Okay. And apparently, she took the cognac. Fifi, I'm kind of questioning the perspective involved in your room a little bit. It's kind of weird. Hmm. It's not really vanished. It's almost isometric. Yeah. But yeah, she apparently stole cognac from the drinking room. <laughs> Might as well. What's up, Fifi? Want to talk? Can we sit? Can we talk? You talk. Want... Let's talk to Fifi. Be friends. Let's ask her about Rudy. I saw you slap a dude. That was pretty sweet. You yeah, hang let's, out? let's talk about that. Aww. <laughs> Poor Fifi. Yeah. All she wants to do is shag the colonel and... In peace. Yeah. Anything. Well, she's French. Yes, yes so <laughs> very French. That, that's a terrible yeah. French accent. Comment ça va? <laughs> ah, regardez le tabernacle. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we call Ontario French. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get when you force Canadians to learn French. We are the worst. <laughs> So now we're just gonna go, uh, yeah. yeah, spy on some more people. I really, I, I mean, now I'm just kind of waiting for the moment where we discover Wilbur's body. <laughs> you know, maybe it's all cool. Maybe he just. I, I was yeah. sort of hoping we would open the other armoire and he would just plop out. <laughs> all right, so that's Rudy, right? Yeah. Rudy is Vincent Price, and that's Clarence. Look at them cheekbones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> me and my gal. Uh, that game of pool didn't calm me down at all. Just, I thought playing pool with my recently uh, estranged mm -hmm. ex would uh, help things, but... Mm. So... I guess if Rudy's to be believed, uh, Clarence and Gloria weren't really super dating. They were only kind of dating. Yeah. Ah. Wow. Isn't he a lawyer, Clarence? Didn't yeah. He, so, why is it- I wouldn't think a lawyer would be considered low class. Probably not, but I mean he also steals money from his clients. Oh, that's true. Ooh. <laughs> you see this- Oh shit, feed them to the dog? Not Beauregard, leave him out of this. Yeah, come on, man. That dog is... is nice. See this fist? Slide. I'll <laughs> punch you with my fist. I just imagine them being on little trolleys and someone just, just wheels them out of frame. Squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Is anybody ever going to come by while Laura is in the secret room and just be like, Oh shit, what's what? this open door here? Yeah, why'd you... What? Oh. I... What is this? Hello? Laura, what the fuck is this? Hey, old man. Sup? We're not going to talk to you because you clearly oh. don't want to talk to us. Alright, peace out. Um, Your sister-in-law's dead. Uh, I don't know if you care. Well, bye. Just going to go stretch my legs. Uh, how about you, Colonel? If you'll notice, the doctor's bag is gone. Oh. That's one thing I don't like about this, is we don't ever get Laura's reactions to anything. Yeah. So you never know when something significant happens. Yeah, that that's the thing, is you, you, there's no tip-off uh, to, the, to the audience. I mean, it's sort of like the thing with Gertie's room. Like, we saw the kind of overturned uh, uh, chair and table. Laura just kind of looked at it. And almost as though it was nothing special. Well, she mentioned, like, that something maybe had happened there. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, there wasn't much of a, like, oh, I'm concerned or... Yeah. yeah. And it... I mean, I know that it's kind of up for the audience to figure out how they should feel, but it would be nice to have more direction. Yeah, I think just just by having Laura react to stuff, it sort of helps give you a push in the right direction as to... Uh, yeah, again, the significance of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And whether or not you should be really concerned about what's happened to Gloria. Where's she gone? Well, Gloria's still fine. Outside Gertie. Oh. 
That, that looks like a tin soldier. <laughs> Once again, we're just gonna wander the property a bit. Ooh, spooky well. Ooh. I always... Oh, actually, sorry, just huh? to interrupt you. It's kind of nice. We could see the house in the background. We could see uh, landmarks that we've already visited. Yeah, like, they've done a good job of making it feel connected. Yeah. It's just huge as balls. We're... Yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, we're, yeah, as you said, we're doing a good job of kind of keeping everything sort of in relation to each other. Those are some big-ass irises. Oh my god, yeah. God. Are they irises? Birds of prey? Birds of paradise, not birds, birds of, of prey. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I don't even know what they are. Hmm. So, a nice little statue yeah. to a dancing goat man. And there's a twinkling star. It's so peaceful yeah. out here. You wouldn't even think that people are disappearing. Yeah. Man, Laura, you gotta do something. I am running out of things to say about you. Well, there isn't someone laying underneath the window, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. nothing's really obvious right now. Oh. I like the splashing in the puddles. Yeah, that yeah, is That's kind again. of a nice little touch. Yeah. Uh, lightning again. Yep. Or fireworks. And still no body. Nope. Hmm. <laughs> Just, uh... Hmm. Laura Bow, Ace Detective. <laughs> Yeah, that's one thing I don't like about this game, is the plot kind of happens whether Laura helps it out or not. Yeah, I mean, so far we haven't done anything to really impact the goings-on. We've just been a witness to it. And we never really do, like, yeah. to give you a bit of a spoiler there. Like, Laura just kind of lets, or the game is literally just things are happening and whether Laura's there or not. She never's the driving force behind any of the plot points. Mm -hmm. She's never instigating anything herself. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go visit a horsey. <laughs> That's uh, what you do in a murder. I, I, there are blocks of butter outside of the barn. Oh, giant blocks of gold could be. Oh, she's a millionaire. Mm-hmm. That's I lied, kind of, we're not going to visit a horsey. It's kind of a nice uh, use of some foreground elements. Again, I i mean, the color scheme is just a little... It's still a little garish and hard to sort of tell where um, where the focus should be in each scene. But, I mean, I like even how they did the, the magenta in the back to give the sky some sense of depth. Yeah, it's still, I mean, for for its time, it's pretty nice looking. So we're just kind of going for a walk now. Yeah, let's clear our thoughts. Um, I will tell you that navigating the outside <laughs> is really... I wanted to see if there... It looks like you can walk through there. I wanted to see. You should have known better. What? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so it's hard to navigate in this game. Yeah. Uh, you might have noticed. Yeah. There's a... Uh... <laughs> Mostly in regards to doorways, it seems like you have the most trouble. Um yeah, it's it's sometimes you got to pixel hunt almost mm -hmm. to get through them. Um, and going outside, like the problem is, is it's so big. Yeah, like it's so big outside, and most of the places aren't even useful for you. It's it's just sort of extra scenery, I yeah. suppose. Exactly. See, there's an old road. We could have taken this road probably instead of a boat. No, because you took the boat to get to the road. Oh, come on. No, you have to take the boat. Just get over it. <laughs> <laughs> How did they build this plantation if, like, everything had to be shipped in by boat? Just gonna uh, go peek at the gazebo. Dingy gazebo. I guess everything is, again, dingy. As you've said, the colonel apparently doesn't take uh, great care of his home. Not at all. Oh, God. That is an evil-looking crocodile. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> We're just gonna peace out. Well, I mean, there's two of them. They've got red eyes, and they're... Like, you don't need to stick around the hell beast. If they... If they... If you stick around that screen for too long, will they get you? Uh, I know there's some way you can get eaten by an alligator. Okay. I'll see if I can capture that. <laughs> there's a hedge maze. All right. Um, but more <laughs> importantly, there's our destination. It, okay. We're at uh, we're at uh, Celie's house now. Oh, okay. I was just gonna ask whose house this was. Mm -hmm. so, so the butler sleeps in the basement, and Fifi sleeps in the attic, and she has her own little shack. Yeah. She was probably grateful that every day she gets to 
go home and be away from all. Yeah. Of, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess when it's just like the four of them, it's probably okay. Yeah. Even though I think it's indicated that Jeeves and Fifi kind of suck. <laughs> but. So, um, did we have to make friends? Yes. With, yeah. We can't get into the house because you can only get into the house by knocking. Mm -hmm. And if Silly doesn't like you, you don't get to go in her house. Uh, okay. So now you can sit and talk with her if you like. All right. Yeah. And then there's a carrot. A single carrot. The carrot here is actually our goal, but uh, <laughs> I kind of wanted to be polite and talk. It's such an adventure game thing. The carrot here is our goal. <laughs> But we're going to chat with uh, Celie for a while, because honestly, I felt a sense of uh, guilt that I was just going to come into her house and steal a carrot. <laughs> it's a very Canadian thing to feel. All right. So yeah, we're going to... We're going to ask about people. Celie's actually got some good information. Ah, oh, so Lillian's dad uh, committed suicide, unfortunately. And, and uh, drove her mom to drink. Mm -hmm. So Lillian's had a bit of a shit life. Uh, Rudy's a jerk. Yeah. Was anybody, uh, was anybody surprised by that? Up to his ears in gambling debts. Me. So there's the motive for Rudy. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Gloria's cuts, just like her ma. Cuts to the chase. Uh, by that do you mean dead? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, uh, presumably, uh... Glory and Gertie are just all about the colonel's money. Yep. Wilbur, who is also likely dead at this moment. Yep. Don't speak ill of the dead, Seely. That's just mean. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he's dead? Damn it. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do something about this. Hmm. And then the game ends. Properly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just call the police. Uh. Sorry, policeman, but you're gonna have to take a boat. Uh... Oh, bl winking and blowing kisses. The staff. You can never trust them not to start little arrangements. Maybe they're just, like, really good friends. This is th this is the bayou. People just kiss each other for, like, it's like a handshake. It's the 1920s. I feel like they don't. I don't know. That seems, that seems more likely to be given kisses. Just on the cheek. Ah, fair. You know. So bad for Lillian. Mm -hmm. We haven't really seen a whole lot of our friend. We kind of ditched her. <laughs> well, I guess yeah. she kind of ditched us. We're just kind of shit mm. in general. Oh damn it, Laura! You joined the shit club. <laughs> <laughs> now the only good person is Celia and Beauregard. No. Oh. Who knows? Beauregard can't talk. He could be a dick too. Yeah. So the Crouton family we just asked about, they were the, I guess, the original owners of the, the mansion. And I guess the colonel presumably bought it. Oh shit, I left without my carrot. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, now to, now to maintain Canadian politeness, we'll have to do another conversation with her. Damn it. <laughs> That'd be great if she was just like, nah, I don't want you in anymore. Yeah, just know I'm going to bed. Yeah. God damn it. I need that carrot. <laughs> Can you guess what we're going to do with the carrot? I guess. Oh god. Is there a rabbit somewhere we feed it to? Um do we stick it in the tailpipe of a car? Man, there's so many things to do. At least you ask Celie for permission. <laughs> you didn't ask Beauregard. That's, well What's Beauregard gonna do with a necklace? Maybe he wants to feel pretty. It is nice that we do we do ask for her carrot where she's probably making herself dinner. She's making gumbo. So you <laughs> I, I'm not being a jerk there, she's she, actually making gumbo. <laughs> is gumbo white? I don't know. You sure you don't want any carrots in your gumbo? I guess not. Never yeah, mind. She's Mine. probably fine. Yeah, I had your chance. Yeah. You could have said no, but you didn't. Mm-hmm. She probably really wanted that carrot, and she just felt obligated to give it to you. Yeah. Stupid Laura. Mm-hmm. Seely works hard for her carrots. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. There's a horse. Oh. We're gonna give the carrot to the horse. Yeah. Oh, I figured it out. You're so smart. Oh, I did it. <laughs> There's no, actually... No, we have to walk back to the stable. 
There's actually a puzzle in the very first King's Quest game where we need to use a carrot to have a goat follow us. Aww. So, uh, I, I'm gonna assume we don't need a horse to follow us anywhere, but... I don't know, maybe we, like, ride it to safety. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need a stick and some rope, and we'll dangle the carrot in front of the horse and get him to run. Yeah, and we'll just use him to swim across the bayou. Oh, and the crocodiles get the horse. Yeah. Oh, and it's the horse with the broken leg. Oh, no. Oh, it's all coming together. Uh, see ya, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> we just ride off into the night. Yeah, I ain't solving this mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do sort of <laughs> wish that was an option. <laughs> That'd be so good. His lower bow pieces out. The only problem with that is there'd be no sense of, like, danger... All right, well, let's go uh, pray and, uh... Oh, no! Oh! Damn. He fell in a pile of tomato sauce. Oh, no. Is that or his shirt mm. ripped up? So, I mean, when we last saw Wilbur, obviously he was in the house, and now he's kind of... Not. Yeah, he's been taken over to the, the church, and... And it looked like there were signs of a struggle. So was he attacked and killed there? Yeah, and brought out here? Or was he dragged here and killed here? Well, let's search his badati. Bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah, die, so blunt force trauma. Let's just take his eyewear. M well. Stop disturbing the crime scene, Laura. He's not gonna need it. I, I still feel like it's kind of disrespectful. <laughs> I hope she gives it back later so you can at least be buried with it. Oh, yeah, he's Laura Bo I can't get out. <laughs> Laura Bo too. She gets haunted by Wilbur. Because she, <laughs> he's, I can't rest without my monocle. How will I see in the afterlife? So Laura Bo, let's use this to fry some ants. No, we're actually going to use it as a, uh, a oh, makeshift. A uh, yeah. Mm. So who's EP? That's Ethel Prune. <laughs> Remember where we found that handkerchief? Yeah. 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 Just outside the, the door uh, after Gloria, or sorry, Gertie was killed. Yeah. I want to use it on the poker. <laughs> but you can't do that. You have to say to look at, of course, right? Uh, yes. Like. And the poker. Um... Oh, oh. Oh, oh. The poker, uh, of course, was found in the room that Wilbur disappeared from. So is the thing here that he was attacked and uh, killed in the library and dragged here? I, I guess. Uh, whoever's killing these people is like Hulk-like in their strength. Well, and it, they're sort of changing up their modus operandi too, cause, uh, because uh, Gertie was killed by being thrown from the window and breaking her neck, presumably on the landing, whereas Wilbur... Uh, was blunt force trauma, which, you know, obviously being smacked over the head with what appears to be the fire poker. Um, the fact that he was killed with a weapon like that, generally, um, the assumption is that it's meant to be a more personal attack. Mm-hmm. Um. One thing I would, uh, question, do you think that it's one person or several people? Honestly, at the moment, my instinct would be that there are several people going on. Um, just because um, it would probably give the characters uh, some... Uh, b it, it would give the characters a uh, way out um, by being able to be like, Oh no, I wasn't anywhere near Wilbur's room at the time of uh, his murder. I was talking with so-and-so. Mm -hmm. um, Are they in conjunction or is it just people acting randomly and they're not oh. connected? That's a good point too. Is this a planned? Uh, is this a plan by one or more conspirators, or is this just kind of happenstance that people are being killed oh, randomly? God, that horse looks skinny. It's an old horse. Aww. it's a very old little baby horse. Old boxer. Yeah. His name is is Blaze. <laughs> Ooh, I don't think you want to keep a lantern close to a horse's hindquarters like that. Yeah, isn't that how Chicago burnt down? I think that, yeah, that or how Seattle burned down. Some <laughs> someplace. Yeah. Uh, even then, I think that might be folklore. <laughs> Either way, bad call. But we're gonna give the sweet old horse 
Oh, yeah. And we 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 want his friendship, just like giving, uh, giving Kaylee, silly Kaylee, silly, giving, giving her the uh, the necklace earns yeah. her friendship. You're not a great at spelling, are you? It's difficult. <laughs> are we literally just gonna... Oh, no, we're, we're... I guess, presumably, we have to make friends with the horse so that we could take the lantern. Yeah. Otherwise, we get a kick. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Bye, horsey. Uh, I love you. You're dead to me now. I got all I needed from you. Yeah, we'll probably never see you again throughout the rest of the game. <laughs> Probably the first friendship you've had in a while. It's probably yeah. It's probably the first time anyone's visited him in at least three weeks. I feel bad for him now. We're just gonna think about our friend the horse. Now we're off again. Yeah. I might have got stuck on a tree. <laughs> <laughs> you might have got stuck on a tree again. Oh no. Where are we going? Uh, we're going here. <laughs> I don't know. The playhouse. Yeah. Well, we're 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 done at the playhouse now. <laughs> you know. Do we ever get to go inside the playhouse? I don't know. Hmm. You're gonna have to see. Alright, so we got the lantern. What are we gonna do with the lantern? <laughs> hmm. Laura Bo, I don't know what you're trying to do right now. Nope. She doesn't have motivation to do anything. Yeah, cuz... That is a problem with this game, is it feels like a game and not a story. Yeah. Because there's no need for Laura to do any of this. Well, and I mean, we have now we have a mystery. Like, who... We have people being murdered, and I mean, presumably our goal is to figure out the murder. But so far, it sort of feels like we don't really have a good trail of clues for no, Laura to follow. Just random happenings. Yeah. I mean, we we have the handkerchief, and we have the fire poker. Their handkerchief could be entirely circumstantial evidence, obviously. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah, we're just gonna break Henry's house. Laura I'm... doesn't even feel bad about this. <laughs> I'm gonna assume if we stood directly <clears throat> underneath that, that might have also been a death. You know Sierra games. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, apparently Henry just keeps cranks up in the bells. Well, and there's also the valve in the uh, suit of armor. Yeah, which I guess wasn't left by Henry. I don't even know if this was left by Henry. It looks like the croutons just left stuff everywhere. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Well, well, we got that. So. Hmm. I, we don't know what that is good for. Um, because again, this is something you see in a lot of adventure games, is we pick up stuff that we, we the player, know this is going to be useful. But the character doesn't. Yeah. Ooh, we're gonna- I can't wait to see inside this playhouse, because I bet it's better furnished than my real house. Maybe. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so there's our friend Lillian. Oh my god, I didn't even notice Lillian. I thought she was just a doll. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, and I guess she's having a tea party. That's, uh, you okay, Lillian? What is the I'm just gonna go... What is the poster on the wall? I couldn't read it. It looked like some sort of bathing suit <laughs> person. So our, our friend Lillian might be a little off her rocker. A little bit. Hmm. Lillian, do you care that your relatives are dying? No? I, right. Have you even realized? Yeah, well that's the thing too, is that... I mean, when, when Gertie died and and uh, Gloria couldn't find the body and she sort of shrugged it off, like, yeah, I can, that's one thing, but, I mean, presumably time has now passed and nobody has seen Wilbur or Gertie in a little bit here. Are um, they just so self-absorbed that it's not of use to them? Yeah, I mean, I guess it is a big house, so maybe you're supposed to assume that... That they uh, think they're somewhere else? Yeah, that they just haven't run into them. But still, like, mm -hmm. it's definitely a little frustrating <laughs> that you're the only one that knows what's happening. Yeah. I mean, it'd almost be cooler if, like, everybody knew about the murders and everyone was, like, creeped out and scared and cagey and... <laughs> well, because then you've got, like, more possibilities for, like, 
yeah. people snapping. and So basically what you're wanting is a video game based off the Clue movie. A little bit. <laughs> oh. Oh, wait, is that... Is that Rudy or is that the butler? It's Rudy. Okay. <laughs> Trying his luck again, I guess. I, I guess, because... Take a hint, Rudy. When, when a woman slaps you in the face, that should be taken as a maybe. Yeah, good. <laughs> Fuck you, buddy. No means no. Yeah. No means no. 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 Qu'est-ce que c'est? <laughs> uh, poutine. She's gonna go have a nap. Aww. You've offended her. I'm sorry. <laughs> we kind of just politely excuse herself. It's worth mentioning here that I did play a game based off of, uh, and then they were n there were none. Yeah. And that was not a good game. I think there are fant like really good ways that game could be made into something interesting. Yeah. But no. I think with with mystery games. Um, I don't know, they can be a little hit or miss. Yeah, for um, sure. Especially, I mean, we kind of... I've mentioned my Holmesian deduction a few times before. Obviously, you know, Sherlock Holmes. The thing about Sherlock Holmes is if you read the original stories, he's basically um, kind of a giant dickhead, and he doesn't like to reveal um, any of his deductions until the very end. Um, of course, the reasoning he gives is that he doesn't... Uh, he's still collecting information... He doesn't want to, uh... Make a wrong assumption. Yeah. So he kind of withholds every, uh... Little clue. Yeah, until the very end when he's able to confirm his suspicions. But if you were to make that into a game, it's basically, uh... Y you're withheld information until the it's very end, which is essentially Professor Layton. Yes. Where it's You bumble through the entire game, and at the very end, Professor Layden starts dropping down uh, deductions. Oh, this was actually night. what was happening, Luke. Haha, -ha, how did you not know? Yeah, clearly, Luke. I figured it out a long time ago. And I just didn't tell you because I wanted you to worry. Hmm. We're just going to warm ourselves by the fire here. I guess so. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> just enjoying the scenery. Uh, yeah. Burning embers. Yep. Okay. We're, we're good. I'm warmed up now. <laughs> it's it's uh, uh, a little to, chilly outside. I had to steal myself. It's a cold night wandering the uh, the bayou. The, yeah. Bayou. Bayou. B bayou. Bayou. The bayou. The bayou. Bayou Billy. <laughs> oddly enough, I've never been to a bayou. I, I don't know if that's oddly enough. That's I think I, most I, people. I was using it ironically. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I. You kind of ruined it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lorbo, what uh, what are we gonna do to close off this act? Wander around aimlessly. Sounds like a plan. All right. Just kidding. We're looking for the elevator. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sweet. So now this is very frustrating. Oh, we have to figure out the, uh... The elevator. Oh, good. I... <laughs> good job, text parser. Listen, some poor developer had to... God, go away, Shadow Woman. <laughs> I know, it seems so neat at first, but then it's just like... It's yeah. it just... It keeps happening, and I don't care anymore. Okay, good. Well, now we have to go up. I was just about to ask if there uh, was another floor above us that we... Well, you remember how we went up to Fifi's attic? Yeah. Yeah, and there's a door there that you can't... That I just walked past, because you can't open it. Uh-huh. Now the mystery of how to work an elevator. This frustrated me, because I did have the right key. <laughs> Text parser puzzles, guys. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, if this was made um, around the same time as uh, King's Quest IV, Sierra did eventually kind of drop the text parser thing and move to the sort of, as as we know it, the more traditional uh, point-and-click adventure game interface. Which, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think text parser games have a certain charm when you sort of use the text parser 
um, incorporate it more into the game design. But when you have situations like this where it's just a struggle, like, you know what you're supposed to do, but trying to get the game to, to actually... Let you do it? Yeah, yeah. That's when it stops. It just starts being uh, too frustrating to to the player. I love the attic. I think it's nice and spooky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, like a lot of the other areas in the game, you're meant to kind of have a bit of a dark and spooky feel, but the color palette um, doesn't yeah, lend yeah. to it. But this really works. Mm -hmm. And yet, I understand, because if they made the mansion look dark and spooky, it wouldn't feel like anyone lived in it. Mm -hmm. So, so some backstory on the colonel. Yeah, yeah. apparently he is a superhero. Oh, he uh, yeah. got his injuries trying to save a buddy. And, uh, yeah. So maybe that's why he's kind of a rec reclusive guy. Yeah. With some trauma from the war. Yeah. Fun and, and obviously that explains why he uh, has to use the wheelchair. Although, um, as the game sort of suggested, he might not need to use the wheelchair as much as people might believe. Mm -hmm. And who knows if he takes advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's tough to, you know... Maybe he just doesn't like walking. Yeah, also possible. So there's a trunk open and army clothes strewn about, which I'm going to assume is a clue, because why would anyone want to sneak around in this in this old trunk? Yeah. Mm. But that's all we need from the attic. Alright, so we just kind of needed to establish the uh, colonel's backstory and this trunk. Yeah. Laura has a really shiny butt. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just noticed. I like the little comical sound effect of yeah. the elevator. <laughs> bloop. Bloop, 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 bloop. Bloop. I love how it stutters too as the uh, the scene switches. Right. <laughs> We're just gonna take the elevator down mm -hmm. again. Like, why use the stairs? I've always wanted to ride in one of these old timey elevators. I I would not. No. I too would... scary. Too too creepy. Mm. I mean, all you need we, there's too much lightning going on around this house. It's just begging for a Tower of Terror situation. Was this uh before or oh like yeah. I can't remember when they put in uh, the elevator safety catches. <laughs> probably um, 1920s, so probably uh, a little early for that, maybe. Maybe. Well, that is uh, it for Act Three. Mm -hmm. Um, Wilbur's dead, and no one cares. We could even find anyone to tell about Wilbur. Yeah, your life meant nothing. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Wilbur. But we will see you next time for Act 4 of Lorbeau the Colonel's Bequest. Yeah. See you then.